Hey, hey, friends, welcome to Hoppy Hour at Hops World. And today we're going to talk about probably the most prolific hops that created the craft beer industry. That's right, folks. Tip number 113, Max Raphael here from Hops World, Cascade Hops. Let's do it. So Cascade Hops, if you have ever heard of any hops, it's probably Cascade. Cascade is an aromatic hops. It was actually named after the Cascade Mountains of Oregon, where it was created nearby. Cascade is considered one of the four C's of hops, which include Cascade, Chinook, Centennial, and CTZ or Columbus as it may be. It is actually, if you're going to grow one plant as a test, this plant has proven to be the easiest plant to grow in every environment, every weather situation, and most parts of the world. It's actually the hops that started the craft beer revolution way back in the early 70s, and it continues to be a super common and popular hops for use in craft beer. The genetics of Cascade hops is a little bit complicated, but I'll try to explain it. So to create the first Cascade plant, the USDA took a Fuggle female from England, and Fuggle is a native old ancient variety hundreds of years old that has low alpha acids and very European and noble type aromas and flavors and they took that fuggle female and they crossed it with a male from Russia now this Ru Russian male is called Sari Bianca and there's not much information about it uh, I did actually have a plant and I think there is one place in the US to sell Sari Bianca plants. But what I know about it, it has more earthy, um, they even say uh, black tea or a tobacco uh, aromas and flavors. So they took that original Fuggle female and the Russian male and they crossed them and they came up with a brand new male. And they used that male and cross it again with another Fuggle female. And that female would be the future mother of Cascade because they took that new female and they did an open pollination with a USDA male and created a brand new female baby which actually became Cascade. <laughs> yep, it was complicated and that's why it took so many years to create this new variety Cascade. So what that ends up being is actually the genetics of Cascade would be only 12.5% Surrey Bianca, 37.5% Fuggle, and 50% unknown from that USDA open pollinated male. Pretty interesting, huh? So the story of Cascade continues into the 70s, but before we get to that, let's go outside and show you our Cascade plan. Hey, 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 here we are with our Cascade plant in our experimental hop yard. What a beautiful plant, full of beautiful green cones. The cones of Cascade are from usually one to two inches. I would consider them compact, very conical and pointy, very typical cascade looking cone. Check it out. 
So Cascade has alpha acids between 5.1 and 8.9%. There have been cases where they have been a little bit higher. I've seen depending on where they're planted around the world. The oils, 1.25 milliliters per 100 grams of hops. Flavors, citric and that grapefruit flavor that Cascade's really known for. That's the main thing that they really look for in Cascade when they use it to make beer. Now, substitutes, if you can't get Cascade hops, they'll usually can. You could try Centennial, Amarillo, Anathem. I've seen this put Columbus on there. I'm not sure why, but I would definitely try Centennial or Amarillo as a substitute for Cascade. Now, the kind of beers that are made with Cascade, the American Pale Ale is the classic, definitely use Cascade. Uh, IPAs also, India Pale Ale, Lagers, even Porters and Barley Wines are out there that you can get a hold of made with Cascade. Now, as far as production, I would say it's medium production from 2,000 to 2,400 pounds per acre. As far as the hop storage index, uh, it's not great, about 65% at 70 degrees for six months. Now spacing, typically from 12 to 14 feet row spacing and 36 to 42 inches on the spacing in between plants. Now, as you can see, our Cascade plant has branches. They're not the longest, I'd say medium size, maybe 24 inches tops. 20 inches. Okay, some are shorter, like Centennial. Some are definitely longer, like Brewer's Gold and some others. The clustering of the hops is really heavy on each little branch. And if you look at a commercial hop yard of Cascade, it is amazing. Our plant here does good every single year. And I can't wait to pick these hops so we can make some beer with our Cascade. Our hops cascade plant full of cones. Really pretty this year. Always reaches the wire. We always cut her back <laughs> very late. As you can see, cones. Still have some burrs here on late burrs, but it's pretty much mostly ready. We come down here to the base. Leaves are medium size, I'd say, compared to some others. Down here at the base, it's very green, not reddish at all, not even that thick, medium also. Size stems coming from the ground compared to some others that are really monsters. But our Cascade hops every year, it's really beautiful full of beautiful hops cones. Can't wait to make beer. Well, we already talked about our Cascade plant in my hop yard in the United States, but here we are in Belgium at my friend Joris Camby's hops yard, and he has Cascade grown over here in Europe. And this is what a Cascade plant should really look like, folks, compared to mine. So I'm, I'm embarrassed, put it that way. But these plants and this plantation of Cascade, total organic. Wait till you see the plants. We're gonna show you from top to bottom. There's about probably five acres here, at least. Beautiful Cascade plants. I'm gonna start with a little panoramic here. Looking down the row, that's what hot Cascade hops plants are supposed to look like, friends. This is what they're supposed to look like from top to bottom. But bam You're talking a couple pounds of cones on each plant here. Dry. So, the history of Cascade hops goes back to 1955 at the University of Oregon, where a seed was planted by Jack Horner. Took years later 
until 1966 that Dr. Stan Brooks actually chose the plant that became Cascade. It was actually known as USDA number 56013 for many years before they actually named the plant Cascade. And that number became prolific amongst the USDA. And finally, they planted one acre as a test yard in 1968. But it took four years and they stored the hops in Yakima for four years until finally in 1972, Coors decided to try out Cascade hops in their beer. Unfortunately, it wasn't until shortly after that Coors realized that the Cascade hops didn't really meet the profile of the beer that they were making and selling. So it wasn't until 1975 in a celebration of the 200th anniversary of the revolution of the United States the following year in 1976 because the 1776 was the first year of the United States so 200 years later Anchor Brewing made a Liberty Ale their bicentennial Liberty Ale that was really the first craft beer that's noted as the very first craft beer but what really put Cascade hops on the market and made it what it is today and really created the craft beer revolution was when Sierra Nevada came out with their pale ale using Cascade hops. This is really, for most people, considered the first craft beer, even though there was Anchor Brewing's version prior, but this was in 1980 when they started using whole cone hops to make this Sierra Nevada wonderful daily drinking pale ale. There were a few other factors that contributed to the popularity of Cascade. They all happened around the same time. What happened in the late 1980s when this was already kicking, that in, over there in Europe, in Germany, vermicula wilt, which is a disease, hit the hops crops really hard. And they wiped out many of the crops over in Germany, especially the Hallertau Miltefru. So the price of the noble hops skyrocketed, and it made more brewers look at local US hops, and it made Cascade become a lot more popular. The other thing that the USDA did was in 1972, they made Cascade a public variety where anybody could buy plants and plant them with no rights agreements, as many as they want. And that made it very simple for growers to buy these plants. This is the first time the USDA lanced a new variety since the prohibition way back in 1930. Think about it. Everybody was thrilled to get a new variety that they could actually plant. Now, Cascade Hops, for at least 20 years, was the number one hops in America, grown, and, and most of it out there in Washington State, until Citra, in 2019, topped it. It's still always been in about the top five for hops grown in the United States and now it's grown in many other countries commercially over in Europe down in uh, Australia New Zealand Argentina it's been grown for years and a lot of other countries now in Brazil where we have a hops farm it's very popular all through South America and around the world Cascade has become one of the most popular and go-to hops not just easy to grow but great to make beer. So I appreciate you being with me today. We're gonna to do a little dry hop on our Sierra Nevada APA. Don't forget, if you liked our tip, put a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, hit them notifications. We're gonna be doing new varieties every week. And if there's a variety you really wanna know about, put a comment below and we'll see if we can get to it as soon as possible. Cheers to life.